Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we will begin looking at chapter 10, which is stage and continuous gas liquid separation processes, and we will be specifically looking at absorption. At this time, we want to look at an example to analyze pressure drop and flooding in a column. We're going to be using these two graphs that were considered in a previous lesson. And I just sort of ignored the fact that this had this term F sub P in here, which is the packing factor. So we're going to come back to that and see how to apply this. And this has a similar thing. The packing factor shows up here also. So this is the sort of data that one gets from a vendor. Uh, there's different types of packing and different sizes. And then based on that, you're going to have a packing factor. And you may also have some other parameters, but we'll just deal with just the F for today. There's lots of different kinds of packing, and every vendor makes their own variation on almost every one of these. So you need to just look it up carefully with the vendor, probably. But let's see how this applies to an example. So we have a tower packed with one-inch ceramic Intelox saddles. We're going to treat 25,000 cubic feet of gas per hour. The ammonia content of the entering gas is 2% by volume. Ammonia-free water will be used as the absorbent. The temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure is one atmosphere. The ratio of gas flow to liquid flow is one pound of gas per pound of liquid. And if the gas velocity should be one half of the flooding velocity, what should we use as the diameter of the tower? And what will be the pressure drop if the packed section is 20 feet tall? And data for our uh, one inch ceramic interlox saddles. The packing factor is 98. The viscosity for our water is one centipoise and the density for our water is 62.3 pounds per cubic feet. So let's look at the solution. So first we're gonna need a molecular weight of the gas and I'm going to just do it as a weighted average. So it's 90. 8% air with a molecular weight of 29 plus 2% ammonia with a molecular weight of 17 and so we end up with 28.76 as our average molecular weight of the gas. Now STP just as a reminder uh, is one pound mole at 492 degrees R and one atmosphere. And at that case, the volume is 359.05 cubic feet. So my density of my gas, I can determine because one pound mole per 359.05 cubic feet is at 492 degrees Rankine uh, and my actual state is at 460 plus 69 degrees Rankine and I have my molecular weight so 28.76 now the units on molecular weight are going to be units of mass over units of moles so in since I'm using English units, pound mass per pound mole. And I end up with 0 0.07465 pounds mass per cubic foot is the density of my gas. Now for this, I need this parameter down here. So I need L over G, the density of the gas over the density of the liquid to the one-half power. L over G was described in the problem statement as one. I've just calculated the density of the gas, and in the same units, the density of the liquid was given. 
So this is unit free, 0 0.0346. Now this needs to always be dimension free, so make sure that your units are canceling. Okay, so 0 0.0346 is going to be around here, okay? Now, I'm looking for flooding, so there is a flood line on here. So if I go all the way to the top, to the flood line, and then read across, then what it tells me, this graph says that G squared F psi mu to the 0 0.2 over the density of the gas, the density of the liquid, G sub C, this is equal to 0 0.2, this number here. Okay. And I can use this to solve for G. So G is going to be the square root of 0 0.2, density of the gas, density of the liquid, G sub C, over the packing factor, psi, mu to the 0 0.2. All right. I have these numbers given. Uh, rho sub g is 0 0.07465, rho sub l is 62.3, g sub c 32.174. The packing factor, uh, we were told that that was 98. Psi, in this case, is 1, and the viscosity is also 1. These units are the standard units for English units, and the G becomes 0 0.553 pounds per square foot per second. Now this is the G at flooding. I want half of this. So the G actual is half of that, so 0 0.277 pounds per foot square per second. All right, so that gets me the G value that I'm using. Let's continue this by recognizing that G is the mass flow rate uh, times the area, okay? Um, or area is G divided by mass flow rate. And in this case, G is 0 0.277 pounds per square foot second. The mass flow rate is 2,500, no, 25,000 cubic feet per hour. I do need this to be in seconds, so one hour is 3,600 seconds and 0 0.07465 pounds per cubic feet gets me m dot is 0 0.518 pounds per second. So the area is G over M or 1.871 square feet. This is pi over 4 D squared. D therefore is 4 times 1.871 feet squared divided by pi, square root of all that. And so my diameter needs to be one and a half feet. Okay. Now we also know that G, which is 0.277 pounds per square foot per second, uh, is also what I'm going to use for L. Right? G is equal to L. They describe that in the problem statement. And I can use the graph to figure out what the delta P is. So now we've switched to another graph. So G and L, uh, the units here are specified in pounds per foot square per hour. So instead of 0 0.277 pounds per foot square per second, this is 997 pounds per foot square per hour. So right at 1,000, 
looking here for right at a thousand for this so I've got five thousand here I have zero here so one thousand would be in between come up to that in between spot read across Delta P is approximately you no, know, about 0.23 inches of water per foot of packing. I have 20 feet of packing. So multiply these, and so my pressure drop is 4.6 inches of water. So this concludes this example. Thank you very much for your time.